The gambler's fallacy is a well-known fallacy of probabilistic reasoning. A gambler assumes that the dice he or she is rolling is a fair dice, and each roll is independent of the others, but over time comes to expect behavior in the dice that would only make sense if the dice rolls were not independent. It's a great example because the fallacy itself is simple to illustrate, but the concepts that it employs, like bias, randomness, and independence, are fundamental to reasoning with probabilities. So it's also a very rich example that is a great tool for teaching these concepts and developing your intuition about how to reason with them. Coin tosses are even simpler than dice rolls, so let's use coin tosses. I've got a normal coin. A toss will land heads or tails. We assume that a normal coin has an equal chance of landing heads and tails over the long run, so in that sense it's not a biased coin. Now I start tossing the coin. Here's the first toss. Heads. Okay, here's the second toss. Heads again. Here's the third toss. Wow, three heads in a row. Let's say that the next three tosses look like this. Heads, heads, heads. Six heads in a row. Now here's your question. Given this history, what do you think the chances are that on the seventh toss, the coin will land heads again? If you had to bet money on it, would you bet in favor of heads, tails, or put even money on both? Now most people, when you ask them this question out of the blue, without any tutoring on probability theory, will say that this string of heads is becoming increasingly unlikely and that a tail is overdue. So on the next toss, it's more likely that the coin will land tails than heads. There's something very natural about this line of reasoning. The coin is unbiased, so you know that in the long run the ratio of heads to tails should even out. And that's all true. So it's natural to think that the next toss is more likely to land tails than heads. But just because it's natural doesn't make it right. We call it the gambler's fallacy for a reason. The truth is that the probability of the coin landing heads on the seventh toss is exactly the same as the probability of it landing tails, 50%, even after a run of six heads in a row. Why? Because these are probabilistically independent events. The outcomes of the previous tosses have no influence on the probability of the next toss. So one way to state the gambler's fallacy is that it entails the faulty inference that the probability of landing heads is less than the probability of landing tails after a string of heads because the tail is overdue. Now, sometimes a gambler's intuition will go the other way. Maybe six heads in a row means that heads is hot in the gambler's sense. That what we're seeing is a lucky streak, heads is on a roll. And what it means to be a lucky streak is that it's more likely to continue than not. So we estimate the chance of heads is higher than the chance of tails on the next toss. Both of these ways of thinking commit the gambler's fallacy, since they're both guilty of the same faulty assumption. The faulty assumption is that a coin can somehow retain a memory of its history of prior tosses, and that memory can influence the outcome of the next toss. If this was the case, then the tosses would be probabilistically dependent events. Two events are probabilistically dependent, if the occurrence of one event makes the other event more or less likely to occur. In this case, the two events in question are the seventh coin toss on the one hand and the conjunction of the six prior coin tosses on the other. We read this expression as the probability of landing heads on the seventh toss given the history of past tosses is not equal to the unconditional probability of landing heads on the seventh toss. But this is false. In reality, coin tosses are independent events meaning that the probability of the coin landing heads, given whatever history of past tosses, is the same as the unconditional probability of landing heads. It's always 50%. It's 50% for each toss, no matter how many heads in a row we get. We could get 99 heads in a row. And assuming the coin really is a fair coin, the probability of it landing heads on the 100th toss is still 50%. So if we were to write the faulty inference as an argument, it might go like this. You grant that the coin is fair. You observe a sequence of six heads in a row. This strikes you as an unlikely series, and you infer that the next toss is more likely to be tails than heads, presumably because you think that the system wants to return to a state where the ratio of heads to tails approaches 50%. This is the gambler's fallacy. If you go the other way and think that the coin is more likely to land heads than tails because you're on a streak, that's a less common example, but you're guilty of the same faulty inference which is assuming that the outcome of any given toss can be influenced by the outcomes of previous tosses. In fact, what you have is an inconsistency. The assumption of fairness should entail the concept that the tosses are independent. 
but the conclusion entails the view that the tosses are dependent. This notion of fairness, of a fair chance setup, is an important one. It actually packs in two distinct concepts. One is the concept of dependence, the other is the concept of bias. These are not the same thing, and it's important to be able to distinguish them. So in the next tutorial, we'll take a closer look at these concepts and the role they play in defining the concept of randomness.